Hello, boys. Hello, girls. You're now listening if you're on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, SoundCloud, and Podbean. And watching if you're on YouTube, Peter Talks Smackdown. This is episode, I think this is 54. 54. This is the uh, week after the year anniversary of the Peter Talks Smackdown podcast. I hope everyone's doing all right. Um, this podcast is coming to you on Sunday, the day after Roadblock. I haven't been able to watch Roadblock yet, so whatever you hear coming from here is strictly, completely, and totally and strictly without seeing Roadblock yet. Um, a Roadblock WWE Roadblock review will take place this Wednesday with Peter and Jake Talks Wrestling. All right, I think that's episode 84. So, again, if you're listening to this, again, this is without me watching at all uh, Roadblock. And I apologize again being late. The t-shirt thing, I'm actually wearing one of my t-shirts now. I'm, I'm support, obviously, I'm supporting Bernie Sanders. Um, but this is a shirt that um, that's on my Etsy store. Cut the music. Again, cutthemusic.etsy.com. And this has been taking up a lot of my time. So I ain't forgot y'all. I ain't, you know, it, it's not like I'm jumping ship to pursue this without the podcast. But no, no, no. The podcast definitely comes first. Um, but when I'm in a situation where I have to be somewhere, it's kind of hard to juggle the two um, things. So you're going to get your Peter Talks Smackdown, you're going to get your Peter and Jake Talks Wrestling, you're going to get your Peter's Raw Recap. That's always going to be a thing. Uh, hopefully next week I'll be back on a regular schedule to um, get these to you by Saturday. Okay, So without further ado, let's go into Smackdown. And this week's Smackdown was from Milwaukee. Milwaukee. And um, they, I would say this, man. Milwaukee is not a good crowd, even with the can can heat. Um, they it it just I don't know what they're thinking. Uh, WWE to go to you know Detroit, Chicago, you know Brooklyn, all these big places. Then SmackDown gets these sort of like Milwaukee, you know. It would have been nice if they would have actually did another show closer. Well, did a show in Chicago to have, you know, just to have some sort of heat, some real crazy heat. Because talk about coming off of last Monday's, uh, last Monday's Raw and that Chicago crowd being crazy, giving everyone heat, giving everyone, you know, cheers that deserved it. Uh, the smart, the smarty smarts weren't alive and 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 kicking ass um, but the milwaukee crowd just seemed indifferent especially when he got to the jericho um promo which i thought was i thought felt not his promo but the crowd reaction i mean we're talking can heat too they couldn't even put sound in that motherfucker to make it sound like he was actually getting the business from the milwaukee crowd but whatever um Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. But yeah, it starts off with Ms. TV. And Ms. TV is basically, uh, last Monday we when, when Sami Zayn basically came out, made his, not necessarily, well, people would like to call his match with Cena, his Raw debut. And I, not necessarily, it wasn't necessarily his Raw debut as much as it was his, um, him taking part in the U.S. Open Challenge. He blew out his shoulder. And he was out for a couple of months. So I like to say he came out to rescue Neville. I like to, to start his feud again with Kevin Owens. I like to I would like to consider this his actual debut, right? So he's on Miz TV to talk basically about the situation between him and Kevin Owens and why their feud is the is what it is. But the Miz and Great Hill faction is trying to dive in and try to make this guy look bad all right well he's trying to make him look good but i think miz what's good about miz is like if you remember what he did with daniel bryant um for nx for 
you know, the first NXT episodes. Uh, and the fact that, like, you got a lot of these um, indie guys that they don't really have a lot of charisma. They're more or less, you know, they're kind of, they don't present themselves as larger than life. Um, and they'd be more like, you know, low toned and, you know, just not very majestic. And The Miz is all about presentation, you know, and he has a point. I, one thing I agree with The Miz on is, you know, what he does have is a great presentation as a, as a wrestler. And then you take Daniel Bryan. He had to grow into it after a while um, in the WWE. And I think Sami Zayn's going to have to do the same. I mean, it picked up later on, but like, oh, uh, you know, so I'm this guy and blah, 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 blah. And Miz is like, cut, cut, boring, whatever, man. Let's let's go to something else. Um, but he starts to shoot on um, Kevin Owens and the friendship that he had. Um, he shoots on the turn. He doesn't know why um, this turn happened. And, uh, and then he calls out Owens. Miz calls out Owens. But it's kind of weird <laughs> because he calls out Owens and then it's crickets. And it's like a delayed. <laughs> it's like, all right, you know, like, come on out, uh, Owens. And then his music finally hits. He comes out. And he addresses again. That what he did to Sami Zayn when he debuted in NXT was it, it was nothing personal. It was all business. So don't take it personal. And uh, and that you know, looking at what happened in terms of him getting signed to NXT second versus Sami Zayn getting signed first, and the, you know the animosity him just basically feeling jealous it's just a i mean it basically is him jealous and he's like well you got signed first but i got to raw first and what i did to you was 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 all business but what you did to me was personal and i'm the victim here you're not the good guy i'm the good guy i'm the victim and i'm gonna beat you at wrestlemania so it's at set in stone that we're going to get a Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, WrestleMania match. I mean, it's going to be definitely needed um, depending on where it's placed and if it's going to be one on one because he's going to the ring and it looks like they're about to fight. But then he turns and walks away. But then Neville shows up and he's talking about he deserves an I intercontinental shot. So. As much as I love Neville and as much as he's been really wowing me over the past couple of weeks, I hope that this doesn't become a triple threat. I do not want this to be a triple threat so bad. Let it be Sami Zayn. Let it be Kevin Owens. Let whatever rivalry they have had ever since they both started wrestling, you know, back in Canada and, you know, through the Indies. On their way to WrestleMania. I mean, I don't think there's been a story like this ever before. Ever before. Where it's like the two of them and their journey, their wrestling journey, finally comes to fruition at WrestleMania. Because I could see them, you know, how you play basketball. And you're like, oh, yeah, final shot, you know, buzzer beater, and NBA Finals, Game 7, you know, talk the clock's ticking. Or like, you know, bottom of the ninth. Bases loaded, two outs, you know, you know, full count, you know, you point the World Series. This, I'm a point to where I'm gonna hit the home run and win the World Series. And I imagine as wrestlers, these kids was like, you know, probably pretending as a kid, like WrestleMania, you know, you're going down, you know, Generico, you're going down, Steen. I, I meet you at WrestleMania and then they're, you know, pretending they're at a WrestleMania match. So talk about dreams coming true. It's one thing to be one wrestler and having dreams to go to WrestleMania. But when you when you were Kevin Owens and you are Sami Zayn, this has to be the most amazing thing that could ever happen for the both of you, you know, as guys dreaming to not only make it to the WWE, 
but to also make it to WrestleMania, but to also face each other. I've never, I've never seen a story like or heard of a, a similar story like this at all. So I hope they really play it up um, moving forward because there's not really much going on with WrestleMania so far. Again, we got uh, Undertaker versus um, Undertaker versus uh, Shane McMahon, but that's it's more Shane versus Vince, right? And that's the only real big story moving forward. You know, uh, Roman Reigns isn't around to really plug the, uh, the 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 match he has with Triple H and Ambrose. They've been focusing more Triple H and Ambrose for Roadblock that happened yesterday. Again, I haven't seen it, so they can really make this storyline almost as much of a main event than say Undertaker Shane or even um, or even. Um, Triple H, Roman Reigns. You don't have to add much to the storyline. You don't have to do anything, really. Just plug and play. Let them let them create the 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 storyline. I mean, it's already set. It's like 15 years in the making. So you can't really fuck this up, right? Well, anyway, I, I guess the point I was making is as, as, as much as I would enjoy Neville to be in on this kind of action, I need, I need... Just a Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens match. We don't need no third wheel. There's enough th- fucking three man women matches on this fucking card. All right, or just in general, I'm so sick of these triple threats. But um, Shane, I'll, but then, but not sorry, not Shane. But Zayn actually gets to the Miz's face at one point because I think the Miz is like, "Fuck y'all, this is my show. What the hell is going on? You know, none of y'all deserve a shot at an IC belt." I headline WrestleMania, blah, 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 blah. And then Sami Zayn got in his face was like, oh, shit, like, fuck you. You know, that WrestleMania was a f- long time ago. So you need to, like, you know, back the fuck up or I'm going to whoop your ass, all right? And then Miz attacks Sami Zayn because he looks kind of embarrassed and walks away. And I'm like, oh, wait for it. And uh, the Miz attacks uh, Sami Zayn from the back, and that was the opening segment. Um we all know what this becomes, right? This becomes a tag team match. You got the baby faces versus the heels. Kevin Owens uh, and The Miz versus um, Neville and um, Sami Zayn. And this is Sami Zayn's first first ever uh, SmackDown appearance. And I, I mean, maybe he'll be on Raw. Maybe he won't be on SmackDown. But like, hey, as a person who reviews SmackDown, and I, I hope that Sami Zayn. Most of Sami Zayn's work is on SmackDown as he grow into a main event player for the WWE. Then move to Raw later. Again, brand split, blah, 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 whatever, dude. I, I'm not here to have that discussion. I'm just saying, like, if SmackDown's going to be this, let it be a training ground. I think it'd be perfect for Sami Zayn. I think it'd be, it's perfect for, for Kevin Owens. So keep him on there, you know. Let that garbage stay on Raw. But anyway... Owens does a great job in this 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 tag team match to not touch Zayn at all. Any time and every time it looks like that Zayn gets tagged in and he can get to Owens, Owens gets the fuck out the ring. Old school shit, man. I mean, the guy the guy knows what he's doing. They know what they're doing. They know what the money is. The money is in WrestleMania. If they touch before, it it ruins it. Just like what they do with everybody else before WrestleMania or before pay-per-views. They let them touch. These guys don't have to touch. They've touched enough. Just talk, go back and forth, build the story to WrestleMania. That's what he did this match. At any time that Sami Zayn got in, Kevin Owens wanted no parts of this guy. Which I thought was brilliant. And Owens... and. Even when the match started, I was like, man, Owens is going to walk. He's going to fucking leave The Miz out there. And sure enough, he does. He gets his fucking belt. He bounces on The Miz. Poor Miz is in there um, to fucking take a halluva kick and uh, get pinned for the 1-2-3 victory. Um, Sami Zayn and Neville wins. And I just go like, okay, just leave Neville out moving forward to WrestleMania, okay? Just leave him the fuck out. You get a golden truth spot, um, bathroom humor, toilet tissue. Our truth really wants to be a tag in a tag team, um, and uh, 
a very embarrassed, a very uh, humbled gold dust who just doesn't believe our truth or isn't interested anymore. He just keeps um, telling him to fuck off. But it was just silly bad. This is the second bathroom um, segment between the two of them. I mean, he even had gold dust standing up, you know, holding down his stuff so you don't see his junk. It was very awkward, to say the least. Gold, our um, truth had toilet tissue for him, and he's like, you know, I, sh you know, a good tag team partner knows that you need these things at, at certain times, and it was just, it was funny. I giggled at one point, but for the most part, just <laughs> yeah. bathroom humor like that is just, it's just a little too awkward. Brie Bella versus Summer Rae. I, I went into this knowing, you know, so Summer Rae's on a winning streak. <laughs> Two wins in a row. One over Paige, another over Brie Bella. But they're trying to advance the storyline between uh, Brie Bella and um, and Lana, right? Which I think is pretty stupid. The more I think about it, the more it's, it's pretty stupid, as Lana is the heel. And you know how it goes, man. People got to get their wins back. So I, as soon as this match, I knew this match was going to happen, I was like, okay, so Brie's going to win this. And sure enough, um, Brie does win. <laughs> ending um, the streak of uh, Lana, uh, uh, Summer Rae. Ending the Lana, God, why am I keep saying Lana? Ending the Summer Rae streak, right? Because I think Lana Rae, I want to say Lana because Summer Rae and Lana had a few not too long ago that kind of just got so convoluted. It's like, you remember that shit? Do you remember? Of course you don't. Because it made absolutely no sense, that feud with Dolph Ziggler and, and Rusev and, and Lana and Summer Rae. It was so dumb. Um, but Lana is actually sitting at the announce desk, but like literally sitting on the desk. And um, Saxton is asking questions and she's just going back and back and forth, back and forth. And then... Um, Brie wins with the yes lock. Like, Brie has, Brie is basically the female version of Daniel Bryan, which I think is so lame. It's so lame. I'm so sick of it. The more I see it, the more I get pissed. Where it's like, this girl absolutely has no gimmick of her own anymore. Her entire gimmick is the fact that she's fucking Daniel Bryan. So she comes out <laughs> with the yes chance, she does the yes kicks, and now she does the yes lock. Right? That's crazy. A horrible looking yes lock too. I mean, like just wretched, a wretched fucking yes lock. It was an embarrassment. So that's her whole gimmick right now. And you take Lana, who's basically babyface because she, everyone wants her. You walk anytime Rusev is in the ring, anytime that Rusev's in the general vicinity of the ring. If he's cutting a promo, he's anywhere on screen in the ring. Don't matter. We want Lana because Lana's a babe. So now you're trying to make a heel Lana who is naturally baby face. Yes, she's with a heel, but she's a baby face for the fact that the crowd loves her. And then you got Brie Bella, who's basically Daniel Bryan, right? The Daniel Bryan gimmick. And, you know, it's they're forcing her into the situation where she has to be the baby face over this person that people generally likes. And it makes no sense. It makes absolutely no sense. So, and you're going into WrestleMania with this. The blind lean the blind, especially if this is coming to a, 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 a match, right? Okay, so L Lana hits another Bella Busta in a fucking skirt, right? Uh, if this match is going to be going to WrestleMania, man, this is going to be horrible. It's going to be a horrible match. And I hope at some point something changes to where it doesn't happen. <laughs> I hope it doesn't. Maybe you get someone else involved somehow. But the two of them just in the ring by themselves, it just can't happen. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I hope it does not fucking happen. <sighs> it's, it's just so silly. The WWE is dropping the ball with doing this. A, a, a Bella we could give a fuck about and her whole new Brian gimmick and a girl that we want to cheer for making her in-ring debut 
and we just we're going to be pretty certain that she's not going to know what the fuck she's doing. So you're going to have Brie and uh, whatever. I can't. I'm just letting you know. I can't. I hope whatever fucking plans they have with this, I hope they pull from it soon or throw some changes on it. Because as is, it's dumb. Jericho with the Y2AJ shirts stuff. And he cuts a fucking brilliant promo. Heal Jericho. Good stuff. But this Milwaukee crowd, what I said earlier. And where's the canned heat? At least put some canned heat in there. He's trying to get them to chant for AJ. But for some fucking reason, Milwaukee loves fucking Jericho. People in Milwaukee are Jericho-holics. And as much as he's trying to get heat and as much as they're trying to edit and can heat this motherfucker, it's just coming off flat. It's coming off so flat. And maybe this wasn't the fucking city to do it in. Maybe in Chicago, maybe next week in Brooklyn, maybe this Monday or Pittsburgh, or Philly, or something, where the crowd would actually get the fucking point to just rag on Jericho with AJ Styles' chance. That's it. Even to the point at the end of the promo, he's like, AJ Styles, trying to get the crowd to say it, but it just doesn't happen. It was kind of embarrassing, you know, to watch. Even though that promo's awesome, it's just that they couldn't get the heat. And even at the end... When he said AJ, people are screaming. You know, you can't even censor that out. You can't really, you know, blank that out. People are yelling Y2J. So Milwaukee must be a Jericho-holicsville. That's all I'm saying. But it was a great, great, great um, promo. Him feeling underappreciated. You're chanting AJ Styles. Um, what is it? I, you know, I'm not the next big thing. You're the next... You, you supposed to be the next big thing, the next big thing. No, I'm the I'm not the next big thing. I'm the only thing. That was one of the things that uh, stood out. And the people who were chanting Y two uh, chanting for AJ Styles rather than Y two J can go to hell. And like he's trying his best, man. It's just not working. I, I mean, if I worked in pre production, I would I, I would have found something with AJ Styles being chanted and just throw that shit on top. You know. Just to make it seem like the crowd is moving, you know, going along with the program. But Milwaukee just wasn't. He takes the shirt and it's like they got this merchandise. <laughs> AJ, why, uh, why to AJ uh, last one day they get all this merchandise and now the gimmick is the merchandise. So he takes the shirt. And he's still trying to get heat. He sets the fuck on fire, throws it in the trash can. This is where your career is going to go, AJ, up in smoke and all that stuff. But I enjoyed it. I just wish the, the crowd was more perceptive. Yeah, again, I get it. Can heat, can heat. But, like, still, this could have came off way better. Of The crowd could have looked way better in this. But what can you do? Lucha Dragons versus um, Barrett and uh, Sheamus. <sighs> Poor Lucha Dragons, man. Ultimate baby faces. And then you got the U.S. champ. Oh, boy. Sin Cara gets a really awesome hot tag. and uh, But he goes down in flames to a, a bull hammer. Now, last Monday, they did this thing uh, where they had Dolph Ziggler basically face Rusev, Sheamus, and Wade Barrett. And he basically single elimination for the League of Nations. And Barrett was the only one to get eliminated. It's like, what are you doing? You could have just had them clean sweep that. I guess to make it up, he, he got the victory. He got the bull hammer on um, Sin Cara. Um, I guess that makes everything balanced and even, I guess, huh? Ugh, fucking idiots. But uh, because Rusev pushes Sin Cara off the top rope as he's going for a swan down. But it was a great match. This match was awesome. Um... Fucking amazing match. I mean, the match quality, whenever... I don't know. All right. We all know that this was a good match, okay? But what are you doing with the Lucha Dragons right now? I'm glad that the uh, League of Nations are getting wins. They are legitimate, 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 like, fucking great workers. And they are legit champions, you know? They should be winning. But what that capacity of be, they're being used, we haven't really figured out to what degree, right? 
Are they henchmen? Are they, you know, what's going on? Are they this? Are they that? But they just keep generating wins. At some point, a storyline has to develop within the League of Nations. It's something has to develop. Someone has to pull away. Someone has to become the baby face. Um, and or there has to be a definite cohesion of who they are as a group moving forward. You know, they don't get much dialogue. You know what I'm saying? Um, but something has to something has to give up the wild with the League of Nations. Or I'm, you know, other than the fact they're getting wins and beating up on baby faces, um, I'm going to lose interest. And I'm interested in these guys. But something has to happen. They're just sort of, I mean, it's WrestleMania and they have no direction. We don't know what direction they're going in or who they're going to face or if they're facing anyone at all. And poor Sin Cara, and sorry, and poor, uh, poor Kalisto. He's still the U.S. champion, by the way. <sighs> And he's going up against Ryback. Yeah, fuck. Ryback looks on. And I think the new Ryback gimmick is that he's just an annoying le- lecturer that it that he doesn't make sense. Like, I'm trying to think what he's doing. Like, his gimmick is that he's fucking annoying. I think that's his gimmick right now. Just like Monday where he's just like, uh, what does he say? He's in a tag team, you know, superhero, blah, 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 blah. He does it here as well. And it's like, get to your point and shut the fuck up. So that's what it is. Like, shut the fuck up. You know, like, clap, 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 clap. Just shut up, Ryback. We don't want to hear you talk. And maybe that's how he's going to get over as a heel. Like, get heel heat. Just, just talking nonsense, basically. You get the Usos in the back with Young because we have an eight-man tag coming up. And that's their spot to like basically talk shit, uh, shoot on the Dudleys, shoot on whatever. Who cares? The Wyatt family versus Usos, Ziggler, and Ambrose. Um, awesome match. A lot of Harper. A lot. A lot. A lot. A lot of Harper. Uh, I think the baby, yeah, uh, Ambrose gets the win, get the dirty deeds on Eric Rowan. Fucking amazing match. It was a great match. And uh, Ronaldo was all over the place, man. <laughs> Ronaldo is so fun to listen to. I mean, if you miss JR calling, Ronaldo, I mean, he's no JR, but he's damn, he's fun to listen to because he makes, he makes everything sound very exciting. I mean, I hope it doesn't wear old after a while, but as of now, it works. It works like a charm, um, but yeah. And there's a point where um, you know when uh, Dolph Ziggler does his uh, his dive splash, Ronaldo calls it the Stinger Splash, and that's the one thing I, outside of the fact that like this match was really good. But the one thing that really stood out to me, especially in the call, was him calling the Stinger Splash. So I was just like, oh man, that's pretty fucking cool. <laughs> that's really cool because yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but that ends the show. Um, Again, I haven't seen, um, I haven't seen uh, Roadblock yet, but definitely the Wyatts after this loss doesn't look good. Um, Why Ziggler is involved? He's he's not any in anything towards WrestleMania, and the Usos. We still need to figure out what the fuck they're gonna do with those guys, and it seems about to you know. Roadblock was Bray Wyatt versus um, Brock Lesnar. And we don't even know, which should be the WrestleMania match. And you have them lose. I don't know, man. It's also confusing. I'm not going to say that this was a bad um, SmackDown, but very much like Raw. And I enjoyed it. It's just very confusing. Um,. You don't understand the purpose of certain things and something's happening. And it's like, it's one thing to just want something to play out and, 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 and see how it develops within the next couple of weeks on the road to WrestleMania. But because they put this roadblock pay-per-view or network special in between, everything's off. Everything's off, right? 
whether it's Kalisto and Ryback, you know, whether it's uh, Lana and Brie Bella, whether it's you know Roman Reigns, sorry, not Roman Reigns, whether it's um, Dean Ambrose and Triple H, and now the Wyatt, fan, you know, Bray Wyatt and Brock Lesnar. It's like, what the fuck is what? Where where's the direction? It seems the only, and even with Neville, I mean, sorry, even with Sami Zayn and. Um, Kevin Owens, because we're like, well, is Neville involved in this or not? Right? Like, what's happening? Okay, we got the Dudley boys and the and the, Us- and the Usos. Okay, okay, okay. But what are you doing with Ziggler? What are you doing with the Lucha Dragons? What are you doing with the Kalisto? Like, what are you doing? We don't... I, I'm trying to make sense of this. I'm trying to give this review, man. And it seems... And if this is not a good review, it's because nothing really makes sense. Nothing at all. Why 2 AJ makes a little sense moving forward, right? But that's like one. That's like one of, I don't know. I don't know. We got three weeks. Three fucking weeks until WrestleMania. And at the rate we're going, we're going to go to, we're going to end up at WrestleMania not knowing we, we're going to end up at Wrestlemania like okay we're just going to see this match we're not going to have a grasp on what's really going on because I think in the last minute they're just going to fucking say okay you just going to get this stuff we've been telling this story right these different stories right but like fuck it here you go here's just this thing going on like they're in the ring right now they're going to wrestle and we cannot wait for Wrestlemania to be over <laughs> so we can just move on Right? And just like move on. I'm ready to fucking move on. Because as much as they're trying to write, they're writing themselves into corners and nothing's making any sense, I'm just sick of it. I, I, I'm ready. I'm ready to just take any and all these uh, outside of Owens, Owens, Zane that may feature Neville, Brie and Lana. I'm sorry, like, yeah, outside of that, uh, the Dudleys and the Usos. Is there anything else? Yeah, that's it. Those are the only two storylines that are worth a damn. You look at Ambrose and, and Brock Lesnar. No, I don't care. You look at Triple H and Roman Reigns. I can give a fuck. Shame it, man. And Undertaker. But this isn't about The Undertaker. Like, no, like. Let's nip these fuckers in the bud and just move forward. Kalisto and Ryback, even though it looks good on paper, it just, it's the way they've been booking Kalisto, it's just so bad. Well, anyway, I digress. I'm sick of this fucking podcast. (laughs) I'm sick of talking about this podcast because it seems like I'm making no sense because of the fucking WWE is making no sense. All right. All right, so I'll end it with that so I don't make myself sound any stupider than I already do. So hit the subscription button. Remember, uh, New Day Podcast, me and Nathan Newman, um, every Monday before Raw. Peter's Raw Recap, live, live recap. Peter and Jake talks wrestling this week. I said last week, but time got weird. This week, we'll be doing a live um, Peter and Jake Talks Wrestling, and then Peter Talks Smackdown. And uh, hit the subscription button. If you're listening, add us to your playlist. Um, Hit the like, hit the thumbs up, hit the like button. You can leave a comment or hit me on the Twitter at uh, PJTW Central, and also Ellen Japanese. And Ellen Japanese is also my Twitter, it's also my Instagram, it's also my Snapchat. Um... And then you can share. The best thing you could do is share. You can actually put this motherfucker on your anything, whether it's your tw- Tumblr, whether it's your Facebook, whether it's your Snapchat, whether it's your Instagram. Don't matter your 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 Pinterest. Anything, any and all things helps um, to spread the the uh, the good news of what we're doing over here at PJTW Central. So um, I am going to watch Roadblock right now, right? And um, you'll see me again 
tomorrow night, or you'll hear from me tomorrow, but you'll be seeing me as well for uh, Peter's Live Raw Recap. Until then, stay sane and watch out for those foreign objects. Peace.